Come on, why are you slowing down? Oh, this thing's acting funny. It doesn't feel like it has any power. I'm pushing on the gas pedal. I'm gonna pull over. Yeah, Something that's not seems good at all. Yeah, this might be limp mode. That's not good. I'll be right back. Oh, jeez. The engine doesn't even sound right. Great. Hey friends, it's Len here from 1A Auto. In this video, we will talk to you about variable valve timing solenoids, or VVT solenoids. The topics that we'll go over is the symptoms, what the VVT solenoid does for your engine, and the most common reason why these would go bad in the first place. So let's get into it. The first thing you're gonna notice is poor fuel economy. Aside from that, you're probably gonna get a check engine light that comes on on the dash, and it might come up with a code saying P0011. If that's the case, you know you're probably having an issue with the VVT solenoid or something that could cause an issue with this, which we'll be getting into in a little bit. Other than that, you might find that you have a loud ticking noise coming from the engine. You lift the hood and you can hear right down next to that valve cover, ticking noise coming from inside where those valves are going to be located. Or you might find that you have a poor running engine. It could feel as though you have a little bit of a misfire coming from the engine, or in other cases, your vehicle might seem like it loses power, especially under heavy acceleration. When this happens, it's called going into limp mode. What that means is that the car's computer knows that there's something going on inside of the engine and it cuts the power down to a very limited amount so you don't cause any damage to the inside of the engine. Aside from that, in extreme cases, you might find that you have a stalling condition. You try to accelerate and the vehicle stalls out on you or when you're coming down from accelerating back down to an idle, it seems like it kind of stutters a little bit and then just dies right out on you. As always, if you need this or any other part, check us out, 1AAuto.com. You can get this part shipped fast and free directly to your door. Something that's important to note is that not all vehicles will even have a VVT solenoid. Some vehicles will have one, other vehicles will have multiple. Like this Toyota Camry right here has four of these VVT solenoids. Now the overall purpose of the solenoid is to be able to make it so the car's engine runs the most efficient as possible at any RPM. Whether you're revving up really high driving down the highway or driving nice and slow through a parking lot. Fuel efficiency and engine performance are the two main things that they had in mind when they were creating the VVT solenoid. Engines with variable valve timing use a solenoid to control the valve timing of the engine. This is done by your car's PCM or computer. The PCM will send a signal all the way down to this, and this controls the amount of oil flow that leads into the cam phasers on top of your engine, essentially right next to your camshafts. This will change when your engine's intake valves and exhaust valves open and close, maximizing the amount of energy produced by the engine at any RPM. So you'll have a better running engine, less wasted energy, and that of course is gonna equal better fuel efficiency and saving you money in the long run. Okay, so why could the VVT solenoid cause these symptoms? As noted, the VVT solenoid has an actuator inside of it that opens and closes, controlling the amount of oil pressure that gets led up to those camshaft phasers or camshaft actuators. If you were overdue on your oil changes and it had some buildup in there, it's going to get caught on the screens that are on the VVT solenoid. If that's the case, it's clogged, it's gonna restrict oil pressure, and it's gonna cause an issue. It's also extremely important to note that even if your engine oil is clean, if it's even a little bit low, it can still cause the same issue, especially if the screen down at the bottom of the oil pump leading into the oil pan starts sucking up a little bit of air inside with that. At that point, the oil pressure is going to become turbulent. It's gonna kind of have a lot and then a little and then a lot and a little. That's gonna be going past this right here up to the camshaft phasers and those are gonna be doing this with the camshaft, not really knowing how to time the engine properly. Now, why would your engine oil even be low if you had a vehicle with low mileage? The first thing that I would wanna do would be to check for oil leaks. Generally, they're gonna be apparent, external oil leaks. Go ahead and take a peek underneath the vehicle and see if you see a whole bunch of moisture or oil. Other than that, you'd wanna check around that tailpipe. With the vehicle running, go ahead and see if you see any black smoke coming out of there or run your finger inside the tailpipe a little bit and see if you have a whole bunch of black soot. A little bit is common, a lot is no good. Now it's common, even on newer engines, this one right here is an old engine, but you can kind of see what I'm talking about, to have something called blow-by. The reason why you might have that is because newer engines are going to use very thin oil. You might find inside of your engine, you have either 520 oil, 
0 020 oil, or in some cases, you might find that you have 0 W16 oil, which is very thin. Now, the reason why you'd get blow by by having thin oil like this is because although the new engine does have tight clearances, the piston does still have rings that go around it that are supposed to go up in between that and the combustion chamber. So as the piston goes up and down, it can move freely and still seal. But of course, a little bit of oil is going to be sticking to that combustion chamber. Once the piston gets forced back down and creates combustion inside here, it's going to get burnt up inside that combustion chamber and get shot right out the tailpipe. The more oil that's getting burnt up inside of there, the more black smoke and soot you'll have out that tailpipe. When this happens, your oil level will gradually continually go down. That's the reason why it's extremely important to make sure that you keep checking your oil level in between your service intervals and keep up with each one of those service intervals. So if your oil change is due at 5,000 miles by the manufacturer, make sure that you're checking the oil in between and get that oil changed on time. You don't want low oil and you especially don't want dirty oil inside of your engine. If you find that you're having an issue with either the VVT solenoid or an oil pressure issue, it's not a good idea to continue driving your vehicle you can cause some serious internal engine damage. When that happens, it could be extremely costly. So make sure that you find and correct the issue. Now with that said, let's move into diagnosis and possible fixes. The first thing I would wanna do for the diagnosis process would be to make sure that the engine's up to normal operating temperature and on a flat level surface. Once I've done that, I would go ahead and get under the hood and find the oil dipstick. Go ahead and reach down there, pull it out, wipe it off, and inspect the fluid itself. If it looks like it's dirty, it's not a good sign. Now you're going to have to check that level. Once it's wiped off, go ahead and put it back in and pull it back out. You want to look at the very end of the dipstick. That's where you're going to find the little chart. Typically, it's going to have either two dots or two dots and some hatches in between. That's where the proper oil level should be located at. If it looks like it's low, you might find that you have this issue. If it looks like it's dirty, once again, you might find that you have this issue. Either way, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and do an oil change. An oil change on most vehicles is a fairly simple job overall. Of course, you're gonna want hand and eye protection and some basic tools. Aside from that, as long as you have the proper parts and the right amount of oil, it's gonna be easy enough. You just have to carefully get underneath the vehicle to be able to drain the oil and recycle it properly. Now, once you've done that, you can go ahead and start up the vehicle and let it run for a little while. See if it runs better. If it does, and the check engine light was on, go ahead and clear it. Take it for a road test. Assuming it stays off, you're good to go. If it seems as though it comes back, well then you know we have to go a little bit further in depth into this. And this is where we're gonna talk about checking the VVT solenoid. As far as locating the VVT solenoid, some of them might be located right out in the open, like on this engine right here. I've got four of them that I can very clearly see. Otherwise, some engines have it underneath the valve cover. It's a little bit harder to get to. And in worst case scenarios, it's actually underneath the entire intake on top of the engine. So there's a lot of digging involved to even get to this point. But if it does happen to be out in the open, the overall test for it is fairly simple. Let's go with the assumption that you don't have access to a scanner. If you did, you could probably try to graph it and see exactly what's going on and be able to diagnose it a little bit further. Most people don't necessarily have a scanner that they can try to graph with. If that's the case, the next thing that I would wanna do would be to move along to removing the VVT solenoid and inspecting it. If it has any type of buildup on those screens on the VVT solenoid, it's gonna cause a restriction in the oil flow leading up to those cam phasers, which is gonna cause an issue with the timing of the engine. Once it's out of there, you could also try to test its functionality using a power probe. You'd want to use a ground on one of those little prongs on the VVT solenoid and apply power to the other side. While you're doing this, go ahead and give a listen. See if you can hear a little clicking from the inside. That's the actuator doing its job. If it's nice and loud, it's probably okay. If it's a light clunk inside, or it even kind of sounds like it doesn't even want to click at all, that means that it might have buildup inside there, restricting the actuator from doing its job. Now let's talk about cleaning the actuator. People do try to clean these sometimes, and when you do it, you wanna make sure that you don't use a brake parts cleaner. You could try to use some sort of electronics cleaner, like a light detergent of some sort. You just wanna be extremely careful when you do it. When you do that, you might find that you do get some of the sludge and varnish off of there, but it's almost impossible to know if you get all of it out from the inside of the actuator itself. So you might think you did a good job. You go ahead and put it in here, and maybe your check engine light goes out, but while you drive down the road, 
all of a sudden it kicks back on again and you start finding that you have a runnability issue. It doesn't really make much sense to try to clean this. It might try to save you a couple bucks in the long run, but it's gonna end up costing you more time because then what you're gonna have to do is just go ahead and replace it anyways. Now, if you found that you're having an issue with one of your VVT solenoids, it only makes sense to go on 1AAuto.com and order yourself a set of brand new ones. Now, I hope you liked the video. I hope you learned a little something. If there was something in this video that you found was interesting and you think you wanna share it with somebody, go ahead and share it with them. It would mean everything to me. If you like the video or even love the video, go ahead and smash on the like button for me. It would mean the world. While you're at it, go ahead and subscribe, ring the bell. That way they're you. All of your friends can be kept up with all of our latest content. Thanks. So you'll have a better running energy. So you'll have a better running engine, less fuel efficiency. So you'll have a better running engine, less fuel efficiency. I said it again. So better running energy, less wasted energy. Can you just lay it over? Ready? Mm -hmm.